so I gave uh, Micah one of my uh, single point slings recently and then uh, he, he tried it for one time or something and then said, oh, the thing is uncomfortable. <laughs> so I figured uh, since he, you know, had that kind of verdict that fast and I always use a single point, I try something different. So I have a uh, two point right now, kind of like more what Micah keeps, keeps using. And uh, I've only tried it once at home, but it already felt much better. <laughs> so I'd be interested uh, how it works out tonight. Um, my problem is usually with the single point up here in the shoulder area. It's where it, where it uh, wraps a little bit and gets uncomfortable. And the other thing is also with a single point um, was a bungee cord and I could never get it to be short enough. So I always had the rifle just hang too low. And with that uh, two point right now, it's hanging uh, considerably higher. So this feels much better right now on me. Um, different, obviously, once I put the uh, Eberly stock backpack on and everything, and uh, maybe also jacket and top, but right now, just this right now, is way better. So um, I think that was a good move. Yeah, I should have done that probably two years ago. So um, we sighted in those rifles two, three weeks back. I right? yeah. took them out to the range. Um, was an outdoor range, and uh, we had somebody. Uh, he actually goes by Texas Swine Snipers on Instagram. Um, uh, so thank you for inviting us out. Um, so we sighted him on the range, uh, 50 yards, and uh, actually 100 or 125. He figured out yeah. the 100 yard range was actually 125 or something. But um, got him sighted in the same day. We rushed down to Cedar Creek uh, along 71. New property, uh, somebody just called us out recently and um, he's right in the Colorado River and he said he had quite a few hawks out there, so we, we made it out there. Yeah, that, that was an interesting hunt because um, with that river, something else we hadn't had like that before, where we have this somewhat of a barrier and they can't go back uh, in there or not as easily. Um, so they, they chose to run, run towards us. Mm. ACRs have been doing great. Um, you guys can see it in the in the uh, range video, but um, I'm impressed so far. Uh, never having sh shot an ACR or a SCAR or any other uh, semi semi auto really out of the uh, outside of the AR-15. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect from the ACR, but um, the the three things to me which stand out are one, uh, the weight. Um, I was expecting something more like AR-10. You know, I have, an, uh, I have an AR-10 at home and the thing is just heavy and I don't like taking it out. So the ACRs are pretty lightweight. Uh, two, um, the noise level. You know, we have them suppressed at 6, 8 SPC <coughs> and the noise level um, is less than I expected. I expected I them to be, you know, noisier. Yeah. So very comparable to the AR-15. And then three, handling, um, you know, I switched over to the two-point sling. Um, I find the handling is pretty good. Um, also, the the fold, you know, uh, fold away buttstock mm -hmm. is pretty nice for getting it into the range bag and whatever. But the handling is great too. So I mean, I said it already when we were out in the range, but I think it's a true con contender to the AR-15 for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy shooting it quite a bit. Um, the 6.8 SPC is something I still have to get used to, especially trajectory. Um, that's why I wanted to make sure here again and uh, to the f a few shots of 50 yards, I'm, I'm right on. I'm not 100% sure yet, 100 yards, I don't have a good feeling for it yet. Yeah. The 6.5 Grendel, I just, I just knew that thing would hit, yeah. you know, it's almost like a, a homing missile or something. But uh, 6.8, I have to get used to it a little bit more, but um, I'm sure we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. So let's head over to the wheat field, uh, as, you, as, you guys, uh, as you guys can see. Um, we lost daylight, so and we had some rain clouds coming over, so it's an interesting weather condition tonight. Uh, I'm not sure what the humidity is saying right now, but my image was good in the Thor 4. Um, we're both shooting the Thor 4 640 now, the 2.5 by 25. Um, the Thor 4s do pretty good in humidity. I had the 384, and you guys have seen the video. Um, humidity performance is actually really good, so I don't think it's going to be an issue for us tonight. Um, and I hope that the weather condition, you know, with it rain a little bit, it's just getting those hawks to move more yeah. than usual. So, yeah. nice. let's go. Yeah.
Lorenzo be in the back third or quarter of that field. Uh, here we made, made our way all the way from the corner in. Um, we didn't have a lot of noise coverage tonight, but the wind was good. Yeah. So wind was in our favor, and I think this was a group of over 20 hogs. Mm -hmm. um, there were a few bigger ones in here, and that's definitely one of them. Um, this field is somewhat uneven, so there's, yeah. there's a few low spots in, um, so we couldn't... At, at times we didn't see them very good, right? Yeah. As, we, as we moved in closer and we had to be very careful with the weed being pretty noisy and uh, again, no noise cover. I had to be, be uh, careful, but at, at some point we got a better view of them and I think we were 100 yards, 120 yards? It's about, yeah, probably 120, 125, because yeah. this guy you shot, yeah. he came back towards you, right? Yeah. Yeah, he moved <laughs> uh, from over there in, but probably closer to us, that's right. Um, so we, you know, we got ready, um, started started our countdown, and I was focused on this guy. I was the, the shooter to the left, uh, Micah was in the middle, and Chris um, to the right. And uh, as we got going, everybody, everybody was ready. I just kept on this guy, and I probably hit him, I think, four times. I mean, each shot I took, I, I heard a pretty significant uh, hit. So, um, and at some point, I could, at the end, he, he turned and went down. And that's uh, mm -hmm. when I started uh, stopped uh, shooting really in the. Most I of could hear that. I was hearing the. I fired once, and then didn't have any other shot. I took mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. uh, needle shot. I know I missed, but I kept hearing you hit this guy. It was right. pap, pap, pap. Right. Yeah. No. I was. I was pretty happy. Um, at first, I didn't have quite the confidence on the on the, on the zero I put in the, in the ACR, but uh, after that episode I feel pretty good about it now so um, and the 68 did good I mean it's a big board this guy is probably 240 yeah. 220 yeah, he's, he's, he's pushing 240 for yeah. sure um, I mean with the wheat and everything it's it's kind of hard to really you know aim for a particular area especially once he's running um, uh, first shot I tried to aim uh, you know behind the ear area but I don't know if I actually hit him right there so it's gonna be up to the video to find that out. Uh, one of the shots went in further underneath his, uh, kind of like right underneath his eye, eye socket. Yeah. Um, and then we have some center mass uh, shots, uh, hits. But so he, he went down 6.8 SPC, um, big boar. I think we have to watch it some more. I need to see some other hogs, some yeah. different sizes, and see how they go down, especially. Maybe once we have a, a better opportunity, a better picture of the hawk, so we can take more um, targeted shots and see how they do, yeah. you know. Um, but uh, it was a it was a good hawk and good uh, good kill. Um, yeah. So you took one shot, uh, and they disappeared in the in the beat yeah. fast, right? Yeah. I just went back and looked at the video, which is cool with the the yeah. four four. Um, we'll look at it again, but it looks like I've made contact. I had. Probably from about my fingers are up, I could see clearly, and then the wheat was uh, up along the, the body where I was trying to shoot. Uh, but the way it left, it looked like I hit it, but then it d disappeared. So I thought maybe it dropped, and I got back down, and that's where you were saying it. Yeah. The, the land yeah. drops. Yeah. Back here, and it's it's almost impossible to find yeah. them. There's one. I mean, this spot we're in right now, it's pretty it's pretty bare, um, which is nice for our video and, and photo shooting and whatnot, but. Um, otherwise, the wheat is pretty tall already, and I think, um, yeah, I mean, this is where, you know, tripod stands or some sort yeah. of stands, 10 feet, 12 feet, would be essential yeah. to really get that view. I had this last year, um, you know, you would shoot something in here, and there's just no way of finding them. You you would, you know, you can walk through here for half an hour, an hour, and you might <coughs> step next to a hog and you don't even know. Um, so once they shoot them and they lay down, it's almost impossible to find them unless you have uh, a good elevation. That's where you know, a thermal drone would come in handy. Yeah, be. So if anybody wants to sponsor a thermal drone, <laughs> uh, send me an email. Um, but yeah, no, otherwise um, it's it's going to be tough. But anyway, so was, that was a good field. We'll head uh, over to the next wheat field yep. and see what we what we find over there yeah. and uh, get some more customers for the 6.8. Yeah, it's a great Let's shot. Nice job. Texas Yacht. He reeks. Yeah, I can smell him.
this. Yep, ready, Chris.